In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the powers of the imaginary unit. And in the last video, we went through how to derive i to different exponents. And essentially what we found is that it goes through a cycle. And these are the four key values that you'll see when you raise i to any different power. So for instance, i to the fifth power is just equal to i i to the sixth power is the same thing as i squared, which is negative one. i to the seventh power is the same thing as i cubed, which is just the opposite of i. And i to the eighth power is just one, and that's the same as i to the fourth. And essentially, every time the exponent is increased by four, it just goes back to that same value in the cycle. So i to the fifth, i to the first, these are equal to i to the ninth, i to the 13th, and so on. i to the 6th is the same thing as i to the 10th and i squared. i to the 7th is the same thing as i to the 11th. And i to the 8th is the same thing as i to the 12th. And i to the 16th, and so on. So they cycle every time the exponent is increased by 4. And in this video, we want to look at the geometric interpretation of why this might be true. So to do that, we want to look at what's known as the complex plane. So it's a way to plot complex or imaginary numbers, where instead of the x and y axes like we normally have when we graph, we're going to have what is known as the real axes, which usually we just write as re, and we'll have the vertical axes, that will be our imaginary axes, which we will usually abbreviate as just IM. And for the real axes, it's going to be just the normal numbers, 1, 2, 3, or going to the left, we have the negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. But the vertical axis is going to be different. We're going to have different multiples of the imaginary unit, this I here, which is the square root of minus 1. So this will be I, this will be 2I, and then 3i, and so on. And down here we'll have minus i, minus 2i, minus 3i, and so on. So a number, let's say like 3, will live right here on this plane, and a number like 2i would be right here on the plane. But if you had some random complex number, let's say you have the number 2 minus 3i, you would go to your real part of 2, which is right here, and then you would go down to your imaginary part of minus 3i. So this 2 minus 3i is right here on the complex plane. So any complex number, which is composed of both a real part and an imaginary part, can be found somewhere on this complex plane. So to better understand these powers of i, Let's say we're starting at the value of 1, and then we take 1, and we multiply it by i. So now this is just i to the first power, and when we multiply by i, we go from 1 up here to i. So you can see, in some sense, we made a 90 degree rotation. And if we're at i, and then we choose to multiply by i again, so now this is i squared. Remember i squared, we figured out algebraically, that is just negative one. Since remember, you're taking the square root of minus one and you're squaring it, and square roots and squares are inverse operations, so they cancel each other, and we just get back negative one, which is right here on our complex plane. So again, notice we had a rotation of 90 degrees. And if we're at this negative 1, and we multiply again by i, which remember negative 1 was i squared, so this is the same thing as i to the third power. Since we took i squared, we multiplied by i, they have the same base, so we can just add those exponents, we get to i cubed. And this is just the opposite of i. Negative 1 times i is just negative i. And so that is right here on our complex plane. So again, we made a 90 degree rotation.
and then from minus i, which remember that's just the same thing as i cubed, we're going to multiply again by i. So we're just repeatedly multiplying by i, and when we do it one more time, so i cubed, we know that's just negative, excuse me, negative i, and we're multiplying by i again, so that's the opposite of i squared, and we know i squared is negative one, so the opposite of negative one is just positive one. So that brings us right back where we started. So it looks like geometrically, every time we multiply by i, we just rotate 90 degrees. And if we do it four times, we just end back where we started. So that's one way to see visually why this goes in cycles of four. Since to go all the way around in one rotation is 360 degrees. And of course, since if we were at i to the fourth, since i cubed times i is i to the fourth, which is back at one, if we multiply by i again, that's the same thing as i to the fifth, but that just brings us back to i. Multiplying by i again, it's the same as i to the sixth, and now we're back to negative one, which we also know is i squared. So every time we multiply by i, we're just rotating 90 degrees, and since if we do that four times, we end up in a complete revolution, that's why that the powers of i are going to cycle every four, or essentially every time the exponent is increased by four, you just end up back at the same value within the cycle.